Welcome to the first EIU Technology and Science Symposium, Revolutions in Science and Technology Paradigms. And uh, we have uh, an exciting presentation today uh, that will summarize and bring us the past to present and looking to the future. Uh, but let me ask um, Dr. Steve Daniel, the chair of the physics department, to give us a welcome word. <laughs> it's an honor to be here today, and welcome, uh, welcome to Dr. Baharlu, who I have uh, long known as a good friend and, and uh, trusted colleague. Uh, we appreciate his, uh, his his time and effort to do this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. It's an honor and pleasure to do that. Thank you. Now, I uh, will not say many words about Dr. Baharlu, a dear friend and scholar. Uh, but I just uh, leave you to read his bio, uh, which will be somewhere in the program and on the website. But he is Emeritus Professor and Chair of Department of Geology Geography at Eastern Illinois University in Charleston, Illinois. And even after his retirement, he is not tired. But always, always, when we ask him to speak in my classes, somebody's classes, wh whatever, he, he is ready. And he is ready now. Thank you Thank very you. much. It's sure. a pleasure and honor to be there. Part Thank of you. <coughs> okay, as the screen shows, this is the Earth, very diverse. Its equatorial area always rains, nearly 200 inches of rainfall a year. Immediately to the north of the Sahara Desert and the Arabian Desert, driest area on the planet, six to seven inches of rainfall a year. In the South Kalahari Desert, very dry too. Two miles thick Antarctic glacier, thickest ice on the planet. Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. This is the ultimate diversity which characterizes the Earth. Consequently, very diverse climate, plants and animal systems, and much more because of this diversity. It's been a challenging and exciting system to look at and discover all this and consequence of these. If you look further, so the science and technology is a stair steps for the continuous access, access, ascent of homo sapiens reasoning people. So this is a historical perspective of this journey. You see further look, the tallest mountain on the planet, Mount Everest, and the deepest place on the planet, Mariana Trench. Mount Everest is about 29,000 feet above sea level, and Mariana Trench 36,000 feet deep. So nearly more than 65,000 relief from higher so that's, a, that's impressive. And if you look further under the earth, all the way to the core, part of it is molten. That's what the source of geothermal energy is. And so we have a solid, solid cross the mantle, a solid inner core, a liquid between it, and this caused the Earth to move, mantle and cross, move around it, and this created a magnetic field, and that explained the magnetic field, north and south polar magnetic field on the planet. So the more we look at it, the more complex and exciting system to analyze and understand. Deepest Canyon, Grand Canyon in the United States, which has revealed nearly 600 million years of Earth history. If when we start reading this book, we will do later. Okay, F. We can, Earth is about 4.5 billion years old. If we assume that the 12 hours, that's 4.5, about 252 hours after, we find the first simple form of life, microbes. 
about 458, you see oxygen generating for this plant that takes the CO2 from the air, combine it, makes all the products like grains, and releases oxygen. This process called photosynthesis because it uses this solar energy to make a chemical system to work. About 632, we see the single cells which are complete. They have a nucleus, a membrane, and inside the nucleus we have DNA and genes. That's the first we see, 632. 852, we see multicellular living system. And at 1035, we see the certification of life on the Earth. And in 1159-13, 47 seconds in Earth history, the first mammals or early humans appeared on the Earth. This was the kind of we constructed from their fossils that we find, we call this George, like that. The first upright, and he was working with the rocks, is a rock shirt, it's very hard. When it went break with the sharp edges, they were able to sh shape woods and make arrows. And in the process of hitting this rock, one spark came out. There was some dry grass nearby, and it started the fire. And they invented the fire parts that could shape things, cook things, and reshape that. And get warm in the cold time. And so the ascent of Homo sapiens begin by understanding the planet. We have come a long way. Looking back, just a brief history of it. Many anthropology, archaeology, geography, all Aristotle here, which define the matters of air, water system. And Newton, which law of gravity, Dr. Steve Daniel would have an eloquent presentation talking about uh, Newton. And finally, Einstein discovering relation between matter and energy, and we did this called going out of the planet to other planets and explore this, our universe. However, our ancestors, when we looked at, they were impressive. They built in monument. For example, if you look at these, how did they shape these rocks? They didn't have all the crane to lift them up, all the tools to shape the rocks, but those painstakingly long time devised the system to do that. And Pyramid of Egypt is a great monument to our ancestor ability to do this. And of course many more we have Acropolis in Athens, Greeks, and Persopolis in Persia, Iran. This shows a good indication of the beginning of these using the tools. And of course the famous Cleopatra needle which is now a the brother from Egypt to Washington, I mean, to, San, to New York City, and is raised there on the, uh, in New York. So it's, so a spaceship Earth. When finally we saw that spaceship Earth, that is significant, this concept. That means limited in resources, ability to take care of waste or dispose the waste, the diversity of it, and we like a passenger in an airplane with limited space, limited supplies, limited resources, limited capacity. That's a very important concept. And also, it shows that we are related. We couldn't put a sign on the West Coast and say no pollution from China is allowed. Or a sign at Mexican border, no disease allowed. It is, we are now interconnected, all impacting each other. That's the important concept of a spaceship Earth. In wandering, moving, you will see how fast in the system. So assuming a spaceship Earth, a little spaceship is about 12,000, the diameter of it, or 7,960 miles. It's negligible relative to the distance between us and the sun, 92 million miles. So, a question. At this moment, if I ask anyone, are you moving? No, I'm sitting there. But 
see how fast you're moving. As the Earth goes around itself in 24 hours around the equator, we're moving about 1,000 miles per hour. And going around the Earth in 365 days, we're moving about 60,000 miles at this moment, going around and spinning about 1,000 miles per hour each minute. So it's a lot of motion. It is really a spaceship Earth. Because, as you know, equator is 24,000 miles. So we go around the sun, 60,000 miles an hour. We go around the Earth, 1,000 miles per hour. An important one of the great moments in our history of our ascent was when in 1961, when President Kennedy called on a mission for us to leave the Earth and go to another part of the solar system. In, and we accomplished that. And the mission was we left to go to the Earth to ne next solar system, not next a celestial body, which is the moon. And we made a spacecraft to take a step. This is Apollo 11 approaching the moon to land on the moon. But it was a historic moment because astronaut Neil Armstrong on the pilot in the Apollo 11 called and said, I get a sign, not land. It's dangerous. You cannot land. I re listened to Walter Cronkite on CBS. We had to duplicate his situation in 45 seconds we had. And we the situation and they said, there's too much data. That's OK. Take the stream wheel manually and land. And so he did. And in this area, which Galileo, Galileo because it was light, because it was ocean, but they're not, it's a lava plain, called Sea of Tranquility. And he landed there on the Sea of Tranquility. And took this great picture. For the first time, we saw the Earth from the space as we know. And when the ladder unfolded, came down, the first homo sapien, another celestial body. And this footprint that he left there will remain there forever. Why? There is no air, and there is no water, air and water on moon, so this survived and put the American flag up. Of course, this, this so no air. This is a, made of aluminum. It's a, it's a metal. And the famous statement he made, at 4.17, the Eli, the Eli, Eastern Daylight Time, July 20, 1962, the eagle was landed. And he said, a smallest step for human, smallest step for human as he stepped on the moon, a giant step for humankind. And it's been true. That journey, that discovery has brought us far toward our science and technology. And a few seconds, took a picture with his colleague. And on the, as you see the reflection, American flag and so on, on the surface of another celestial body. We have closely looked at our neighboring planet as we start from Mercury to Venus, the Earth, to Mars, to Jupiter. We have seen it, all these. We have dropped system to examine all these planets and their characteristics and their properties and compare it with the solar system. And we plan to go out of solar system to go to other system and to the galaxy. That will be our journey. So yes, we're going to leave the Earth go to other planets. And we went to the Mars, which is named after God of War, those times that they named these gods and goddesses, because it's red in color, because of presence of iron oxide. So we had life from Mars. We landed on Mars, sojourner, and we traveled, examined the rocks, analyzed them, the air, sample them there. It's like a, like a geologist traveling in sample and provide greater information about our neighboring planet. And we find out 
that was, as we've guessed in it, that the entire solar system made of the same material at the earliest concentration varies, but the same element that we have, the common characteristic. So from the Mars, we broadcast that sojourner, brought us live information. We look further to the whole galaxies, galaxies made of solar system like ours, immense galaxies. And this is our galaxy, Milky Way, because of this whitish color around here, elliptical in shape. This is a meteor, this is a part of the world going through our galaxy. Each of these bright lights are a system like ours, as a sun like ours. Immense, large, and our plan is to study all this or one day travel to all those places. So how many stars are there in our Milky Way galaxy? This gives you some number. Astronomers estimate that the Milky Way contains up to 400 billion stars. This is the web information I took from the web. So how many galaxies are there? About nearly 100 billion galaxies. Wow, that's immense. Based on our solar system knowledge, we have samples, we have been on Mars, we took sample from Venus, analyzing not hand but the system, and spectrum, the light comes from them, solar system knowledge, light spectrum from other solar system and galaxies and meteors that comes from these celestial bodies. The entire universe is composed of the same elements, various concentration, a common characteristic. That's a significant discovery or information. However, science and technology has brought us this far in our lifestyle and life expectancy and ability has been a great promise. But that promise also has brought some threat that I'm sure give you some example. And you will see that this, we made a plane to travel. We couldn't run as fast as the deer, made the car, and then finally made a plane to transport us across the planet for emergency cases or knowledge cases. And then someday, somebody used this plane to three towers in New York, as you all heard about 9-11, and killed instantly 3,500 people, and many, many injured later. And then Einstein told us E is equal MC2. If you transfer matter to energy, Energy will be 186,000 square times more. Wow, that's impressive, that relationship. And then, when he was presented in 1946, a general sitting there said, what did he say? He said, well, if you convert man to energy, he said, has anybody done it? He said, these Ferny people, these Jewish people come from Germany, Jews, they tried to test it on the Chicago Stadium, and they lost control. And you will have you seen, I don't have what He said, okay, gather those scientists. And said, convert that to a weapon. Doomsday weapon, powerful weapon. Call it Manhattan Project. So they, they use that enormous energy to make a weapon, which was little fat boy we call it the first nuclear bomb. And this airplane, one day, we call it Enola Gay, because the pilot of the plane after, uh, named it after his mother, took this bomb, which we tested in Almogordo, New Mexico. It's enormous power and energy, and ever increasing mushroom of its power and took up with this plane. Japanese made a mistake, attack us in Pearl Harbor. Truman was in Europe. They said, Mr. President, we have made the bomb. Where should we drop it? In Japan's encampment of army. 
as you all know that, he said, no, why don't you drop it toward their populated city so everyone in the world knows that doomsday weapon has been invented. And also, I will see some example of this. Now we all heard global warming, storms, unpredictable weather, hurricanes, so on, that we more and more heavy snow. This year, one area, 100,000 or so cattle died in North Dakota because of a snow. Unpredictable. So they dropped it. At 8.15 a.m. on August 6, 1945, Enola Gay plane dropped a 20 kiloton atomic bomb on Hiroshima, Japan. Moments after a mushroom cloud rises 20,000 feet over Hiroshima, exploded in the air. Within 11 seconds, 200,000 people died, and it still is, what? And it still is taking life? Yes, the bomb is gone. Those of you know, nuclear material have a half-life. How long would it take to half them to decompose to a safe one? That's called half-life. Some of these uranium have seven million half-life. Still are active, still give radiation. So that's when it said, still taking life. And three days later, we dropped one on Nakazaki, the second most populated city in Japan. Hiroshima, Nakazaki, and this was immediate side effect. People were burning. Some of them were melting. Actually, people were standing. The muscles cooked, so the muscle first and the bones cracked. 200,000 within 11 seconds. They're still taking life. So, also Three Mar Island, March 28, 1979, Three Mar Island accident, which and Chernobyl in 1986, radiation. And Japan's Fukushima recently, we have had this accident. They're detrimental, they kill by cancer, but takes long time because radiation, half-life. And so many people have died and will die of this cancer. Einstein, who discovered relation between converting matter and energy, E is equal to MC2. This is in young Einstein. And this is in his 1946 picture after he saw the effect of bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He said, the unleashed power of the atom has changed everything except our way of thinking. Thinking to understand the use of these technologies. Hiroshima and Nakazaki bomb was not fault of science and technology. It was the human decision to do that. And said, and thus we drift toward unparalleled catastrophe. Dr. Wafik and Steve have created many presentations to bring all the science and technologies, investment, and discovery. But that is the, the second, that human decision, human character, human tolerance, human understanding using this technology and science. So science and technology, when it's a historical perspective, how various civilizations, cultures, and great thinkers have related to discovered science and technology and their use. That's a brief. This is Mary Leakey, as you have the famous anthropologist, and both archaeologists. She discovered in Tanzania, South Africa, as he, as he was journeying, some footprint in the volcanic ash, which is now fossilized and remained there. And he saw this footprint. It seems a female, male and a female footprint. And he analyzed it, radioactive dating. There were 3.5 
million years old footprint of our ancestor on the ash, volcanic ash in East Africa. The most historic discovery. And this was some other animals ran by. So this footprint, it shows the says evidence of two up upright Homo sapiens moving left. So we have covered it because it's a beginning. It's a significant clue to our beginning. The discovery of human footprints, East Africa, shaped the study of human origins. And now we have to protect it. How long we have been here? Where did we come? Shows more details. This is in the Smithsonian Museum, just a replica as a picture to show volcanic and two human, male and female, and their footprint. So we have a evidence, tangible, accountable, measurable evidence that we have been here for about 3.5 million years. The footprint, like we had it on the moon, Neil Armstrong, which in the future, people go and see it and analyze it. And later, in the same area, we find some bones, which we discover and analyze it, put it together first. And this called Lucy, was the same area when the, the footprints were, as another famous discovery, tangible evidence, how we looked, how he shaped, So our earliest technology was fire and a stone axe. Rocks, they shaped them to make sharp edges and so on. And of course, we discovered the fire by making those rocks. And we shaped this stone. These are chert, sedimentary rock with a hardness of seven. Diamond is 10, seven. So they break in sharp edges. These were the tools that our ancestor made for cutting, hunting, and chopping. <clears throat> these are our first tools. Of these, our human ancestors, this is called in the same area. So, now all these mysteries, shape, size, characteristics of the earth, it is the beginning of curiosity. Who are these curious our general ancestor. These were Greeks, Romans, Persians, Egyptians, Mesopotamian. Mesopotamian. These called ancient civilization. These are the ones their curiosity wrote, discovered, and tried to interpret all the features of the earth observed. A contrasting, dynamic, fast moving earth. As you know, all these located here, Egypt, Greeks, Rome, Persian, Iran, they call them right now. These are areas. There were f five civilizations were there. These are the name of the countries here. So how this started? The Earth's natural forces, like volcanoes, Earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, thunder, lightning, solar and lunar eclipses, seasonal climate, forest and brush wildfires, earth top top topographic features, diverse forms of life, and their relationship and disease and death have been of intense interest to Homo sapiens and their earliest appearance on the earth. How did this happen? What has caused this thing? Can we predict it? What are who, what, or who is responsible for all these events? Answer that question. See how early ancient civilization, those five answered it. Understanding the cause of the effect of these natural forces are the stepping stones and the staircase of science and technology and the ascent of Homo sapiens. And the cause, so much homo sapiens is risen in people 
a journey of knowledge and excellence, understanding those. And of course, many of these, those gods, they said gods and goddesses are responsible for these forces. They had the power to do all these, make tornadoes, hurricanes, different life forms, have shape like that, and build. And this ancient civilization built impressive site for this god and goddesses. Parthenon and in Greece and Pantheon in Italy and Mecca in Saudi Arabia and many other features which was where these gods and goddesses lived, who made all the things happen, who had the power to do that. That was the way they interpreted. And of course, Egyptian, which they impressive monument we see there, and their god of Osiris, which is the god they called it for Egyptian. They left a picture, interpretation on the, these monuments of what they taught. Role of God, what was the role of God and goddesses in ancient civilization? The God and goddesses were blessed with powers and cursed with human emotion. They loved, also they got angry. And when they got angry, some of those hurricanes, tornadoes, flood was the anger of these gods and goddesses. And blessing of food, fruit, wheat, so on, good days, also they, so they had the same characters as because they created, they stick as human. And their residence been on the top of the Mount Olympus, they call them Olympian gods. I'll show you the picture. The important character of the Olympian 12 gods was then immortality, they lived forever. Each of them had the ability to appear in front of more mortals and provide them with advice and help. And many of them also could have get angry and do such with a lot of interpretation in Odyssey. Some of the ancient gods, goddesses, to get angry with mortals and they harm. So they would get angry. They do things, they burn, they kill. And let's give you some examples. One of the, of course, Greek god was Poseidon, excuse me, was Poseidon, which is god of the ocean, which makes water comes, hurricane, and all people around the beaches were destroyed. That was power of Poseidon. And they had the power of Zeus. And this was the god of Persian, Zoroaster. And Mitra was the goddess of rain. That's what we call meteorology, science of. And Romans accepted many of the Greeks gods and goddesses, but they created one of their own gods, Vulcan, because they had a lot of volcanoes in Turin, Mount Etna. And Venus, goddess of love and beauty. So they create these gods and goddesses to explain all the features that appear on the earth. And Mesopotamia. Each of these Greeks and Romans accepted. Each of these civilizations, they created their own gods, and they got in a competition. And then the next generation got the more powerful gods and goddesses. This is Mesopotamian gods and goddesses. Of course, you all know the god, which is in Quran, Torah, and Bible who created everything. And you have to obey that God. For example, as you know, God told Abraham to take your son Isaac and take it to that place and cut his throat, your only son. And Abraham had to listen to God. Abraham is the one who said, he generated first God instead of all God and goddesses. And this God, the first messenger of this God was Moses with the Ten Commandments, Mesopotamian God. And God wasn't as happy with Moses, and so sent his son Jesus to bring message. Up. And then, was it, as I said, as happy, so God called Muhammad, prophet of Muslim, to come up in the sky and visit the God in person and bring the God's message. And by the way, all these Mesopotamians were in Mes Jerusalem. 
This is Mosque of Omar, when Muhammad went to the sky. This is Church of Ascension, that Jesus Christ afterwards died, went up. And by the way, there's a footprint in this church called was a Jesus footprint, it's a worship place. And then the Western Wall, some people by mistake call it Wailing Wall, which is insult the Jew, which is the Jerusalem, which is the holy place for the Jewish people. So this is the most important city in, in the world because they greatly influenced the civilization of the whole entire planet. If, they are, if somebody is Christian, Jew or Muslim, this was the people of this area, these people who originated this concept. So Mesopotamians had a powerful God, and of course, they, like others, they had Satan, which sometimes did awful things. So this is the, how they interpreted it. All the changes, all the emotion, all the food on the earth, those gods and goddesses. Now, how the science, technology, how the science discovered the true character of, and the causes of all the forces on the planet. I put some of these pictures for you, these great ancestor of us who gave us what we have now, a send of science and technology. Francis Bacon, Rene Descartes, Copernicus, Malthus, I give him one each one, Galileo, Da Vinci, and finally Isaac Newton that uh, uh, Steve's going to have a great presentation about. Isaac Newton discoveries and contribution, and Immanuel Kant, and of course Charles Darwin, and Einstein. These are our ancestors who gave us the picture of the fact, the forces, the science, and the technology. Very briefly, this is Francis Bacon. This is the person responsible for so-called scientific revolution in 15th century. He said, nature is subject to rational, natural laws. Wow. They were not gods and goddesses making this thing? He said, no. The nature is, and mechanics is philosophy. That means nature obeys the laws of science. Every change, every action, every modification, precisely, and our task is to understand those laws. So, and said the natural science, scientific principle, is applied to small in the atom, the human, the plant, even the DNA, the genes, solid, liquid, everything follows those natural. Oh, so let's find out those laws. This the same time some of the people use this knowledge and predict the rain coming and predict the cloud and they call them witchcraft and alchemy and so on. And they use, took advantage of this, probably have heard about it. And they were, of course, they hanged them because they, were, they were, had a contract with Satan. Satan gave them this power. No, the no witch. So, Rene Descartes, what did he say? What did he do? He said, I think if you think you are this, homo sapien, these people think, I think, therefore I am. And the famous Augustin Rodin, the thinker, the pa Rodin Museum in the Paris, a thinking person picture to deflect that. The self ever living, we are the reflective self ever living because we think. And the same time, up to that point, he said, the earths where we created, God created the man in his image and the woman out of the stomach, man's stomach. So the earth is where we are, is the center of the universe. And he went through all the pictures. This is the earth, everything else is going around the earth, Mercury, Venus, all other planets. 
and above was heaven and below in the middle of the earth was the hell, the picture they draw at that time. And so, believed by ancient civilization, Jews, Christian, Muslim, that the earth was in the center, yes. From universe, okay. So Copernicus discovered the earth was not in the center and the sun, earth went around the sun and draw the pictures. And of course he displayed the earth from the center of the universe and Galileo by his telescope looked and said Yes, the Earth is not the center of the universe. Earth goes around the sun and brought the heliocentric concept and wrote the book. And the Pope got mad because he took our Earth out of the center of the universe. And so Galileo brought his telescope and said, Majesty, you look at it. The truth shall set you free. Of course, Galileo stayed in the house. And Leonardo da Vinci explained the difference between science and technology. He said the doctors, a physician is a scientist, a surgeon is a technology that means fix what physician finds. And to give an example, and Leonardo da Vinci described that. Okay? And Rene, Isaac Newton, who discovered the law of gravity, which made it possible for us to build things and go to the moon and come back. We know that force, and uh, Steve will give you a detailed interpretation of that law of gravity. And Immanuel Kant also said that Dr. Cornabis would give you some information about it, that not only we have to be understand this and other things, moral things, not only we have to be empirical, not only be a scientist, but you have to have moral, caring, compassionate, don't discriminate, and so on. That's another subject to science and the moral category which is directly at hand. And he said, for example, like this lady who is blind, but he can feel the touch of her daughter's hand, listen to the accordion, but he cannot see the rainbow. So the things we feel without seeing. And came Industrial Revolution, role of inventors. I go, James Watt, the create a steam engine. One day he was making tea, and the mother in his pot hot up, and the head, the pump, the lead jump out. Where was that force? And he discovered when liquid goes to vapor, has a lot of pressure, and a steam engine and so on, to go because they, and Thomas Malthus, which also talked about geometric growth of population, which overshot the resources of the earth, which is now we, we see in that. And industrial revolution, it follows that. Okay, I mean, go through fast. Hey, boy, you took five minutes of mine to talk in the beginning, sorry. And Charles Darwin, that you know, find it. With fossil evidence, how we started it, gradually evolved. In other words, I'm standing here, everything I gain, and who I am is the contribution of my ancestor. He grew up, okay. And we have evidences. This is Grand Canyon, which shows 600 million years of Earth history. Um, in the sediments, the fossil, shows us the earliest life and how the life advanced in the Also at the same time came appreciation of the nature and with God. And the most important, I'm gonna finish my course, Science finds God. Science discovered the character of the God. Many people believe Muslim, Jews, Christian. Science, those who want to believe the God, science give them the character of that God. Science defended God. Science increased reputation of God. Science got the true picture of God for those who want to believe. And what it did science, as I finish, you know what fossil is? Yeah. Fish, animal, dark, fall in the sediments, become a fossil, fossilized, and give us evidence. Sedimented rocks, like here, a remain of a dinosaur. 
these sediments, the bottom is older, goes up, gets younger, have a complete record of Earth history with evidence. And one of the great places, of course, is Grand Canyon. For example, in the Bible, Quran, Old Testament, we have the story of big flood. God got angry and told Noah to build the ark, take your six people, your family, and one pair of each species, and I'm going to wipe everyone else. Called biblical flood, flood of Noah. And in that time, we estimate he suffocated about five million men and women and children. Okay, this is what scripture says. But the science defend God and said he was not a criminal killer, killing innocent. What happened to sanctity of life if God did that? So the science brought the evidence to refute that. Discovered for those who want to believe the God of all this universe. So what is one good example of it? And so our intelligence, us, has brought us a long way. And our vision and intelligence will the cases further in the future. And future is where we'll live the rest of our lives. And you are our hope and our future. We have come a long journey, long way on our own, and we have a long way to go. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Deepest Canyon, Grand Canyon in the United States, which has revealed nearly 600 million years of Earth history, if when we start reading these books, we do later. Okay, F, because Earth is about 4.5 billion years old. If we assume that the 12 hours, that's 4.5. About 2.52 hours after, we find the first simple form of life, microbes. About 4.58, you see oxygen generating for this plant that takes the CO2 from the air, combine it, makes all the products like grains, and releases oxygen. This process is called photosynthesis because it uses the solar energy to make a chemical system to work. About 6.32, we see the single... Welcome to the first EIU Technology and Science Symposium revolutions in science and technology paradigms. And uh, we have uh, an exciting presentation today uh, that will summarize and bring us the past to present and look into the future. Uh, but let me ask um, Dr. Steve Daniel, the chair of the physics department, to give us a welcome word. <laughs> It's an honor to be here today, and welcome, uh, welcome to Dr. Baharlu, who I have uh, long known as a good friend and, and uh, trusted colleague. Uh, we appreciate his, uh, his his time and effort to do this. Thank you very much. Very dry too. Two miles thick and Arctic glacier, thickest ice on the planet. Pacific and Atlantic Ocean, 
This is the ultimate diversity which characterizes the Earth. Consequently, very diverse climate, plants and animal systems, and much more because of this diversity. It's been a challenging and exciting system to look at and discover all this and consequence of these. If you look further, so the science and technology is a stair steps for the continuous assess, access, ascent of homo sapiens, reasoning people. So this is a historical perspective of this journey. You see further look, the tallest mountain on the planet, Mount Everest, and the deepest place on the planet, Mariana Trench. Mount Everest is about 29,000 feet above sea level, and Mariana Trench 36,000 feet deep. So nearly more than 65,000 relief from higher so that's a, that's a impressive. And if you look further under the earth, all the way to the core, part of it is molten. That's what the source of geothermal energy is. And so we have a solid, solid crust and mantle, a solid inner core, a liquid between it. And this caused the earth to move mantle and cross move around it and this create a magnetic field and that explain the magnetic field north and south pole of magnetic field on the planet. So the more we look at it, the more complex and exciting system to analyze and understand. Thank you, Steve. It's an honor and pleasure to do that. Thank you. Now I uh, will not say many words about Dr. Baharlu, a dear friend and scholar. Uh, but I just uh, leave you to read his bio, uh, which will be somewhere in the program and on the website. But he is Emeritus Professor and Chair of the Department of Geology and Geography at Eastern Illinois University in Charleston, Illinois. And even after his retirement, he is not tired. But always, always, when we ask him to speak in my classes, somebody's classes, wh whatever, he, he is ready. And he is ready now. Thank you Thank very you. much. It's sure. a pleasure and honor to be there. Part Thank of you. <coughs> okay, as the screen shows, this is the Earth. Very diverse. It's equatorial area. Always rain, nearly 200 inches of rainfall a year. Immediately to the north of the Sahara Desert and Arabian Desert. Driest area on the planet, six to seven inches of rainfall a year. In the South Kalahari Desert.